coming at you with another Friday night podcast, which means having a couple adult beverages. And there is this new flavor of long drink by Heartwall that I gotta say is pretty damn good, except it comes in this gay little can and it's only four and a half percent. They got the gin and peach and then the gin and raspberry, which has been new. And I'm a big long drink fan, but why the little why the little bitch can? And why is it four and a half percent? Normally the white cans are four and a half percent. It's like the flavor's good, but not a great marketing campaign on them on themselves by doing it with the mini can and mini alcohol level. But that just tells you what I'm on for tonight. Let's see, why is this not... Had some issues with the microphone. Oh, I got, still got some issues with the microphone. Trying to figure this shit out. It was struggling all day. I don't know how to get it to follow. Well, I'm just going to have to trust that it's working. I mean, I know that it's working last weekend. It was like it was stuttering. So I had to use that camera audio, which I apologize for, but it worked out all right, I guess. Some people were like, that was one of my favorite episodes. And I was like, oh, I didn't even listen to it because of the audio. Won't make any clips out of that one, to say the least. So, yeah. Yo, yo, yo. Welcome to Living for a Living, episode 112. Living for a Living, baby. How you doing? <laughs> This is good though, man. The peach. I think Juanquero is coming to the U.S. So for all my U.S. people out there, I'd stay on the lookout, especially from the RPS company, Rock Paper Scissors. I think they're doing it under that name. Maybe not. I've got to talk to Samuli. But it's uh, I don't know. Juanquero is gonna have a difficult time, I think, getting into the American market, just because. It would, it'll be tough to get guys on board for it. It has this like cultural infatuation here in Finland, which makes everybody like it to a certain degree. Also, it's great in the sauna. The U.S., we don't have the same sauna culture and the same long keto. It doesn't, it doesn't have that cultural grab that it does here. And so I think it's going to be tough to get guys on board because it's, kind of a bitch drink like I know 20 year old me if I saw one of my friends drinking this or a pink can and then I tasted it I'd be like bro you are a fucking pussy drink a beer and occasionally actually I run into a guy in the bar Finnish dude in the bar and he'll be like you like beer or long kettle I'll be like well I like beer more. I drink beer normally at the bar. It's nice to switch it up with a long keto. And you know, okay, good. Long keto's for women. <laughs> I'm like, my man, I guess <laughs> I guess you, the cultural grab hasn't gotten him either. So I think with because of that, it's going to be tough for the cell in America to get the guys on board. For sure, you get girls on board with it. Because the closest thing I feel like we have to it is Smirnoff Ice, which I know it's not the same, but it's sugary. I think Smirnoff Ice, yeah, is vodka, obviously, Smirnoff. So, uh, I'll be a, hey, anybody, any Finnish companies trying to sell Lonquero to the U.S., I'll be a spokesperson for you. I might call it, call it a bitch drink, but I'll say it's a great tasting bitch drink, you know? Ah, but yeah, man, gonna kind of start this one a little, a little bit of the old, it's cheaper to do a podcast than it is to go to therapy session and start it a little serious. I don't know. I, th- I think I got some jokes coming up and even got some jokes muddled into the depression. <laughs> If you don't laugh, you're going to cry sometimes, you know what I'm saying? 
But now lately, it's like I've started to understand Finnish people a lot more in the reason why they don't like to be asked, how are you? Because I know that's this like cultural thing here. And then you do ask a Finnish person, like, how are you? You're going to get a serious fucking answer. And so if they're doing bad, you're going to hear about them doing bad. And I'm, as I've said last week, I think, you know, I'm still kind of in this little bit of funk. I'm coming out of it. Um, I'm not asking for any sympathy or anything like that. I know life's ebbs and flows and that kind of thing. But I right now hate it when someone asks me, how are you? Or how are you doing? And I'm like, ah. I haven't even been taking my own advice. I know I've told people on here, like, say you're excellent. Lie. Say you're doing wonderful. But I'm like, I just don't feel like faking it. So I'm just, I hit them with an, I'm all right. Because I also don't want to get into my issues and my problems to just some random motherfucker that really doesn't want to hear it. You know, I I don't want to have to be like, well... Actually, I'm spending a lot of time in bed just playing Clash Royale and binging Netflix, uh, kind of feeling homesick and feeling guilty because my dad is now struggling with onset dementia and Alzheimer's due to side effects of the booster, which he's now had to move home and back in with my mom, which is causing a lot of stress for her and then going to have to sell the business. And she's stressing out now because she's the caregiver and then I'm kind of helpless to the entire situation because I'm fucking 4,000 miles away. And then meanwhile, I'm not really enjoying the things that I've always enjoyed doing throughout my life, kind of feel stuck without any meaningful relationships around me, feeling trapped in my tiny fucking apartment, and it's also still snowing and cold as fuck in May. So I tend to just answer with, I'm fine. (laughs) I'm all right. And I know maybe that is a little bit depressing, uh, but it's also real as fuck. And I, again, I'm not like, I don't, I, I really am not feeling bad for myself or anything like that. And I don't need any, uh, sympathy or anything like that at all just getting it off my chest feels kind of good because ultimately I know to get hippie with it I know that life is about ups and downs the ebbs and the flows one of my good buddies I had on the podcast a couple years back David uh Shretha Shretha I can't say his name right he's Nepalese he explained to me that you know he views life is like a heartbeat where it should be going up and down. Boom, 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 boom. And it's as soon as it starts becoming the same, it starts flatlining. That's when you're fucking dead. And so I know that this is maybe a little bit of a dip, a bit of a flow. What in ups and downs and ebbs and flows is ebbs up or is flows up? Maybe it's neither. It's in and out. And so I understand that this shit just happens. That's how it goes. And sure enough, the trick to life in my (laughs) philosophical mindset is to always remember when you're feeling down, this shit's going to pass and you'll start feeling good at some point. And also then when you're on top of the mountain and you're feeling really fucking good, enjoy that shit because understand this shit's going to pass at some point. So I kind of, you know, I know that it's, it's where we're at. And also like the thing that's like, uh, fucks with your head a little bit. And I'm sure people can relate to this is when you're in this little bit of a funk, it's like, I know I'm not helping myself at all throughout the funk. You know, I'm not working out as much as I normally do. I'm not eating very well. I'm not sleeping. I have good sleep habits. You know, I'm I'm on my phone way too fucking much. Not doing any journaling, not meditating. 
not getting outside, like all the things that I know make me feel better and like improve mental health in general, I'm not doing. Even though I know that it'll work, it's like this in turn then I feel or I, I don't, I feel shitty or I like, I judge myself then for not doing it. Cause it's like, motherfucker, you know how to fix this shit. You're just choosing not to do it. And so I don't know if it's like, because I guess maybe to a degree, I don't feel like I have a ton of like control over my life in general, right at this very moment, which is kind of a rare thing for me. And so I've, throughout my little readings and probably saw an Instagram post about it, to be honest, is like, I've seen that like people will stay up late or like, you know, I'll, I'll let my kitchen get dirty as fuck. I'll let my apartment get dirty as fuck, which I'm not some super clean freak or anything like that, but I know I don't like it to be like that, but it's like the one thing I can kind of control. And then as I'm saying that, I'm like, well, you dumb fucking idiot. You could also control it being really, really nice at the same time. So, um, you know, I just, we're getting through it. It'll be good that we start, we got our first game next week. I'm getting tired of fucking just practicing without like a goal in mind. I think that's maybe part of, you know, a small, small aspect of the whole thing. Um, so that'll be good. It's, it's just, uh, again, I'm not trying to like, I don't need to be talked off a ledge or anything like that. Just kind of saying it. And I'm sure someone listening feels the same now or as at times have felt the same because even though we love to think like, Oh, no one understands me and I'm the only one. We're all pretty fucking similar. We all go through very similar emotions and thought processes, even if it's completely different situations. So, like, that's, you know, that's how it's going. But, like, even today, it took me, and even when I when I do go to the gym, it takes me, like, all fucking day. And I just mill around in my head of like, oh, do I want to go? Oh, should I go? No, maybe I'll stay. Oh, I need to eat. Now, oh, now I have an eight and three hour. Now I need to eat again. And I just deliberate or dilly dally, as my mom would say. And dilly dally. And, and then it's finally like, okay, I need to go. And so like, but then as soon as I go, as soon as I get there, I feel fucking good. Like I was honestly kind of feeling shitty earlier today hit the gym, came back, and I started the pot off with some, like, a little, I I honestly thought this one was going to be depressing as fuck to start, and I was like, oh, okay, no, I feel kind of good, I'm making dinner, kind of dancing to some music, I was like, you dumb fuck, just go to the gym, it's just, it's not that hard, and now, even a little bit extra reason to go to the gym, is I, I have an official gym crush, and uh, if you were at Huipu Center tonight, Friday night, around 9 o'clock, then you know exactly who I'm talking about. But I have learned my lesson, and despite what girls say on social media and all that shit, I will never, ever go and hit on a girl at the gym. I know on TikTok and stuff, they're like, yeah, no, it's, you can do it in the right way. And uh, it's like, just, it's my one rule. It's a rule I have. Mainly because I think most of the guys who do it are fucking tools. (laughs) And I don't want to fall into that own category of my own judgment. But then the other reason, and I won't even, even if the girl talks to me first and initiates a conversation with me and hits on me, which has happened because we have a story time now. I have learned my lesson. I won't do it because I did do it at one point. When I was in Poland the second year, this girl, Justina, Justina, how do you say the J in Poland? 
Yana, yeah, Justina, Justina, oh God. Like she was probably one of the most attractive girls ever. Like when I think of in my mind, my type, she's who shows up. And lo and behold, I don't know how or why. She talked to me first at the gym. Well, I know why. I was doing handstands. And this was back in the days where I couldn't even really fucking do handstands very well. Like compared to now, four years later, yeah, I'd have really impressed her now. (laughs) But she started talking to me first. And we used to flirt and kind of finish up our workouts together in the little stretching room. I'd do my handstands, some other stuff. We'd literally do some stretching together. It was like low key. Maybe that's why I'm so negative towards gym couples is because it's just this like part in me that is like, you blew it. (laughs) But we were like getting kind of cute, talking on Instagram, all that kind of stuff. And I went crazy boy on her. You've heard of crazy girl. Crazy girl is pretty common these days. It's much more rare. You don't hear about it very often, but crazy boy does exist. And dude, I was it. Whatever the definition of playing it cool is, I was the exact antonym of that. Exact opposite. However, however playing it cool goes, I could not have been further from the opposite side of that. I probably had a shot, but I was one way too available. I know girls will say like, well, I, I just want a nice guy that like returns my text messages and treats me nice and ha 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 bitch. No, you don't like if there's one thing I've learned as I've gotten older, I used to be the nice guy. I used to be the guy that responded super quickly, who would, you know, be there all the time. Availability is not attractive to bad bitches. Like, if if you're too available, if you're the, like, you need to be available just enough. But if you're always available, I mean, they, girls are like guys too. They want to chase. Same, same shit with me. Like if a chick's like, okay, well I can hang out this day, this day, that day, and this day. Just tell me. I'm like, ugh, ugh, no, don't tell me that. And boy, I was like, so available. I'm double texting, triple texting, good morning, good nights, smiley faces, Trying to hang out every fucking moment of the day, you know, or not every moment of the day, but every opportunity possible. And I fucked it up basically. And then, and then once it like wasn't getting reciprocated, I like got into my own mind and I'm like, well, why doesn't, why doesn't she like me? And then you almost like start questioning and getting mad at it. And it's like, oh yeah, this girl like doesn't owe me anything. And you're being fucking psycho. I wouldn't want to date you if the shoes were flipped around. And so I, and then once that happened, eventually it got awkward. Because I went straight crazy fucking boy on her. And so then I didn't really want to go to the gym. And then I'm trying to avoid her at the gym. Trying to go at a different time than we normally, I normally would. But still all the while like thinking like, oh, well, what if she shows up? You know, just totally, totally in my own head. And so, yeah, I think it got me totally off my routine. Start going to the gym less, stop going to the gym at different times. So from then on, I'm like, okay, yeah, I don't care. Like, I don't know. We better discuss if, man, I don't know. That's tough, I guess. Because I'm, I just thought to myself, all right, if I saw this girl from the gym tonight out at the bar this weekend, I'd for sure go up and talk to her. But within the first conversation, I'd be like, all right, so when are you normally going to work out? 
let's get this figured out right now because as much as being a cute little fucking gym couple sounds, I ain't trying to fuck up my routine, which is also non-existent right this moment, but um, I'm saying in the future when I get this shit together, you know what I'm saying? Like, cause, cause if this goes south, one of us is going to have to change gyms. Although maybe I'm, I'm older, I'm more mature now. I, yeah, I don't go crazy boy like I used to. So, eh, fuck it. Maybe, maybe I'd be all right. Probably would be all right. But still, I'm not going to go make the first move at the gym. That's what fucking douchebags do. Got to get the beer in the glass. You know, I switch it up. I go from a fruity-ass sweet drink to a true man's IPA, although it's in some pink can, too. I don't know. Bad marketing, man. Terrible marketing. But I saw a thing on TikTok. It was John Tafford saying that, like, you can drink more beer if it's out of a glass because when it comes out of a bottle or a can... Or you can drink more beer from a tap or a draft just because it's in a glass, basically. Because it releases some of the gases where if you drink it from a bottle or a can, those gases get like stuck in it and it makes you bloat, which makes you not be able to drink as much. Then you also get the foam. You got to do it, you know. But shit. Man, last weekend was a little bit wild. Um, whew, vapu, vapu, vapu. And uh, the thing I've noticed here in Finland is all holidays are basically just an excuse to get super fucked up. I know a lot of people don't need that excuse. But whether it's Easter or Vapu or Johannes or Christmas or I'm sure there's one that I don't know about that I'm forgetting, they're just an excuse for motherfuckers to get wasted. And this Vapu was no exception. Granted, it was also the first Vapu in like two years that's really gone on because of COVID restrictions. But boy... Holy smokes, people were fucked up. And it was like the the bouncers had a lot on their hands. And also like the bouncer, that dumb, I had a story of one of the bouncers, uh, especially, he, he, he had so much on his hands, a dude I'm like normally super cool with. And I think I am still kind of cool with, but like he ended up kicking one of my buddies out over some bullshit that wasn't even this dude's fault. He wasn't even drunk, but it was like he was kind of hot, I think just in general, but then he was also hot because he literally asked me if I wanted to come in and cut the line. And again, like not to sound all fucking big man on campus, but like that kind of happens with a few of the places out here because I'm this local celebrity, you know, like fucking... Floyd Floyd Mayweather ain't waiting in line. (laughs) And so, again, he asked me, because, like, normally, like, all the dudes, it's, it's like, it's like, uh, it's like going on a date. Whoever invites the person out should probably pay for it. You know? And so, for me, if I'm sitting outside of the club or the bar And the bouncer looks at me and goes like, you want to come in? To me, that makes my mind think, yeah, I'm good. If I go up to him and say, hey, can you get me in? Then maybe I owe him some money. Although I've done that with my homie, Mr. Manners, and he... (laughs) So anyway, but anyway, I see this one dude all the time. We're cool as fuck. Always bro hug it up, da, da, da. I think this dude was just having a bad day because as soon as I got it, after he gets me in, he's like, you know how this works. Mike goes to shake my hand and I'm like, oh, 
So we, we aren't boys <laughs> at all, I guess. And I don't, I don't bring, I don't take cash on me. So I was like, sorry, bro. I don't have any cash on me. I'll get you next time, which is tr- a true statement. I would have got him next time. I'm not getting him next time because he fucking kicked my homie out over some bullshit. So there went your tip player. You just got me in. And cause I think he was like partially mad at my buddy because of the, cause as soon as I said, yeah, I'll get you next time, bro. Which like I go to this bar fucking once a week, sometimes twice a week. I'm gonna see ya, bro. He was like, "Oh, oh, all right, yeah." And like, kind of laughed in my face, kind of like a, "Oh, you're full of shit." And I was like, "Hmm," uh, like I didn't appreciate that at all, because bitch, I'm not full of shit. I still might give him some money. I don't know. I'm, I might. Yeah, I think I might give him a tenner. And tell him like, bro, it wasn't very cool that you kicked my homie out, and back my back my boy up. This is my like, yeah. So anyway, the bouncers had a lot on their fucking hands for Vapu, and it was crazy just to see like at right around midnight because people had been drinking all day, especially Saturday. You could just see the zombies out, and midnight was kind of this like turning point like you could just tell uh, right around there it was like either sink or swim and the a lot of motherfuckers sunk because boy i you just this one dude i saw waiting in line and just like falling over it's like bro you're trying to get in the bar right now you need to Get your ass home. Oh, but but after after like the zombies all left, it was a pretty good night. Like right around one or so, it got to be a pretty good night. I was still a little like not heated, but worked up about the whole bouncer homie getting kicked out situation. So I didn't have as much fun on Saturday as I could. Uh, I went out both nights, which normally I'm not a back-to-back nighter. If I'm going to go out twice in a week, I'm hitting like a Wednesday and a Friday or Thursday and a Saturday or something like that. I need a, I need a day in between. Um, but yeah. Vapu. What else? Anything? Any other good stories from Vapu? There, there was this one good dude who I saw, who I always see out. And again, I don't know if that means that I go out a lot or if that means he goes out a lot or we just have coincidental times and places that we're both at the same place. And he always says like, I always see you when I'm out. And I'm like, yeah, bro, same to you. Like he tries to make it seem like I'm the one who drinks a lot, which I'm not denying it, but bitch, you're not innocent either. And so we were sitting there smoking, having a cigarette. And this one chick was just hitting on him, hitting on him hard. And he wasn't super interested, you could tell. And he looked at me at one point and he's like, yeah, this chick's trying to fuck me. And I was like, oh, well, nice, bro. Good, good for you. And he's like, you think I should? I'm like, well... That's not really up to me to decide. And this was earlier in the night. And then at a, then later in the night, same situation. We're out on the patio. She comes up, locks on to him again. And luckily I had a friend next to me translating the conversation that was going on because it was in Finnish. And it was like this girl trying to convince the dude to go back to her place for an after party with her and her friends. And I'm like, wow, Finland really is about equality. You got, I've, I've never heard a conversation where it's the girl trying to convince the guy to go back to her place for the after party. In my 31 years on earth and a decade plus of being at the bar, it's always been the guy hitting on the girl. Yeah, we got a hot tub. Oh, we got champagne. We got whatever. 
and here this girl's like, yeah, we got, uh, you know, the big cans, Long Caddo Lime. And the guy was like, oh, I like lime. <laughs> it's like, oh, well played, miss. Well played. But uh, ultimately, he did not go back with her. Maybe a good decision on his part. I don't know. If I, if I was her, I would have given up two hours before she gave up. Because he was kind of being a dick about it. And I think I have like a decent understanding of like guys being hot or not. And I'll just put it this way. I wouldn't be trying to fuck this dude. So, I don't know. She, she, you could have done better, honey. You could have done better. <laughs> oh. Speaking of wasting your time, I'm back on Tinder, or basically what I like to call just entertaining myself while I poop, because boy, it is a time waster for the most part, but something I realized was for whatever reason, there's a lot of like Thai girls on the Finnish tick or on on the Finnish Tinder and like truly in Thailand, like they're using Tinder plus changing their location. They're 7,000 miles away or 4,000, however fucking far it is. And I'm always like, like what is, and all of them say, you know, like I'm looking for like a serious relationship and yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, what the hell? Like it doesn't make any sense. But then it registered to me when I was in Thailand a few years back, I met a Finnish dude who had a Thai girlfriend that the only way that they were together was because they had met on the internet. Because this dude was fucking terrible. I mean, oh, like awful. He was hard to be around. I don't, he like overheard us t- talking English. I was with my boy Adam. And he jumped into the conversation. And he was just as negative as could be. Drunk as fuck. He was Finnish. <laughs> but no, like t- just and the chick was cool. The chick was hot. And I'm like. How in the world did these two end up together? And I was thinking to myself, like, oh, maybe he, like, bought her for the night. Because that's, like, a thing there, you know? I mean, I guess that's a thing a lot of places. But then I think they had said, like, no, we met online. And I'm like, huh? And so as soon as I see these Thai girls on Tinder, I'm like, huh. I think his name was Yoni. I think I'm Facebook friends with him. Honestly, Yoni was his name. Yeri, one of the two, started with a J. And I was like, "Oh, this guy sucks." And I'm kind of like, I never get the match with the Thai girl, and like part of me wants to, but then also part of me is proud because it's like, "Oh, I must not look like someone that's desperate." And that will just give you money <laughs> to be in a relationship with you. Or maybe I, do, I look poor as fuck too. I, maybe. I don't know. I guess my first picture is like with my long ass beard. So they're like, yeah, this homeless fucking guy doesn't have any money. So, yeah, that's... That's... Uh... <laughs> that's, that's how it goes. Hmm. And I know I I talked about earlier, you know, my apartment being messy and this and that. I cleaned it the other, I don't know, earlier this week. Because it was like, there was a possibility that a new girl was going to come over. And there's nothing like cleaning your apartment with the potential of someone new coming over and seeing it and judging it. If it's someone I've been messing with, I don't really give a fuck for the most part. Like, I'm going to try and clean up a little bit. But to a degree, if 
if the, if they're down, they're down. It doesn't matter if there's a couple dishes in the sink. You feel me? <laughs> uh, probably an asshole thing of myself to say. Oh well. But then on on the same note of asshole things, I don't know actually if it's an asshole thing or not, but Ray J came out in, <laughs> I hate that I know this shit, but it was on Twitter. I think uh, Candace Owens tweeted something about it. She's a good follow. God, Twitter's a fun place. Elon bought it. Liberals are freaking out. All right, I'll get back to that. But Ray J came out and like, talked about the Kim Kardashian sex tape escapade and the business behind it and how it was super organized and all these things. And I low-key feel bad for Ray J because, dude, he was a piece of meat, literally. And it was also his idea. He had talked to Kim about the idea of like releasing the sex tapes in order for her to like gain some clout because at the time she was like unknown. She was like Paris Hilton's friend and Ray J was like still a C-list celebrity. And so once he explained it to her, she explained it to her mom and he said like once her mom got hold of the idea, it was like, yeah, we're doing it. And just, I mean, ah, It just goes to show, man, that Kardashian brain and pussy makes people crazy, bro. Like, it's literally, uh, I think think it's contagious. Because Pete Davidson is getting Kim Kardashian's kids, Kim and Kanye's kids' initials tattooed on his neck. Like, how fucking insane are you, bro? It makes it hard to believe. Like, I almost have to think these people are just, like, trolling the world in order to get us to talk about them, that it's going to make them more money for ads and sell tickets and whatever it may be. Because I couldn't fathom being in the spotlight spotlight like they are, getting... My the initials of the girl that I'm dating's kids on my neck. Like, get the initial of her, uh, whatever, little double K. Word, that's cool. But to go with the kid, like, oh, that's just, like, insanity. Like, I'm sure, I mean, Pete Davidson's already on antidepressants, I'm sure. But I, I bet when he breaks up with Kim Kardashian, he's going to kill himself. Like, it, it seems like that's his only next step. But, dude, back to Ray J. Like he said that once it became the thing, like, he didn't even have a copy of the tape. It was like the tapes all went into the mom's hands and Kim's hands. And I'm just like, dude, what in the fuck? Because... I'll keep it real. I've dabbled in the filmmaking business. Well, I can't say business, but the industry. <laughs> but motherfucker, I'm keeping that shit. We're not, I'm not, no. We can both have it. Don't get me wrong. We can both have it. But I'm for sure going to have it. You ain't going to be the only one that has it. Because, I mean... Granted, I'm not doing it with Kim K, but I'm going to keep my receipts. And so just the idea that he first is like, then he gets kind of thrusted into, no pun intended, into this thing where like his family probably judged him, all this stuff. And I mean, I'm sure maybe there was like an NDA about it. It probably happened like 10, 15 years ago. I'm sure those run out at some point. And so he couldn't talk about it. And so he just had to be the bad guy for a while. Meanwhile, Kim K's just made millions and millions and millions of dollars. And it literally all started then from a sex tape, which her mom was behind and encouraging for her to put out. 
Dude, that's wild, man. That is wild. Hmm. And speaking of sex and insanity, the old Roe vs. Wade thing got reversed. And liberals are just losing their minds with this one because they don't know how to act. (sighs) Because... (laughs) Because earlier this week, there's a thing that came out that said they need to start informing the education system and the and the nursing that men can have babies you know they've changed the the rule the terminologies from women to birthing people so that that was like the first line of insanity and then roe versus wade comes up and it's like well it's against women's rights and if if you don't have a uterus then you don't have a say and it's like well I thought men could have babies. But then I also thought that you can't define what a woman is. Like, that was also a thing within the last month. The Supreme Court person couldn't define what it was. She's not a biologist. So it's like, what is it? Like, it's comical for, it's comical to see like the far left try and argue anything because if you give them enough time they will completely contradict themselves over literally everything like it's only going to be a matter of time before trans before gay before all that stuff is then the enemy somehow some way they'll figure out a way to do that but like on the roe versus wade stuff you know this it's like it, it just coming from the a common sense as much as I can be perspective, it's just putting the decision back into the state's hands, which I personally think for most all issues, they should be up to the states because yes, we're one country, but it would be like there being universal laws in Europe that apply everywhere is every place is a little different. And the morals and values and lifestyles and all those things from state to state in the U.S. is a little different. And so it makes sense that with a population of 300 million, the one rule that works for somebody isn't the one rule that should work for somebody else 3,000 miles away. And that different communities can decide on different things like democracy. I don't know. That's what I thought it was. When the Founding Fathers started this shit, I don't think they were thinking it was going to... I mean, they were big on state rights. And they weren't thinking it was going to be for 300 million people, I don't think. So, that's the first thing. The second thing is, the abortion topic is just funny to me in general. It's like, first of all, I don't get how it's so fucking hard to pull out. Like... How dumb do you have to be to not pull out? Like, and that's the issue is it's always dumb motherfuckers that aren't pulling out when they should be like I growing up my first, I don't know when I had the sex first, first time I had sex was, I think I was 15, 16. My mom's learning a lot on this one. First time I had sex, this is a terrible story. The baseball, it was my sophomore year of high school. Yeah. The baseball team, we'd just won state. I wasn't on the team. We were partying at Taylor Young's house. And I got with this girl named Jazzy, who was kind of like known as like a little bit slutty. We had, like, never really had a conversation before we hooked up. I don't know if we ever had a conversation after we hooked up. I was pretty drunk. I can't remember how we even ended up in the same bedroom together 
Because like I said, there were like no conversations pre or post V card lossing. And I barely remember it, to be honest. I was pretty fucked up. So I, I don't have any special romantic uh, virginity losing story at all. But, dude, yeah. But anyway, I don't get, it's always, oh, yeah, the whole reason I said that is like, for a big portion of my sex life, and still to this day, like, if I don't know the chick, like, I'm using a condom. But also, I will agree that as I've gotten older, you're, you're with some more serious relationships like that. You don't use a condom as much. That shit feels way better. But I don't care how good it feels to leave that shit in. In my mind, I just know this 15 seconds of pleasure is not worth 18 years of fucking pain. <laughs> you feel me? And so, like, I can't understand how more dumb motherfuckers don't understand that. Because, and dude, I can't wait until I'm with a chick and I'm trying to have a kid. And I get to just fucking shoot up the club, dog. Bro. I'm going to be hyped, bro. But then even, even let's say you do shoot up the club. And then be a gentleman. Be a 21st century gentleman and go buy a fucking plan B the next morning. Or at least give her money to go buy the plan B. I've had to do that one time. Condom broke. No birth control. I gave her double the amount. I said, bitch, buy two. (laughs) Take them both. Let me know. Just send me a picture of you taking them. I need a video evidence. It's like, what, bro? I mean, I'm so I'm so cautious with that. I've had girls tell me, like, yeah, I'm I'm on the pill. Like, it's okay, you can come inside me. I'm like, no fucking way, baby girl. I appreciate the invite, but not a chance. I'm not trying to be a statistic. Yeah, they say it's like 99.8% something like COVID. I ain't going to risk it. Although, ironically, I ain't getting the vaccine even though the chances are about the same. (laughs) Uh, Speaking of the vaccine, I feel, I feel bad or I feel, I don't know. It's like this. I hate to say, literally, I hate to say I told you so because I'm, as you know, my feeling like I'm not against it. I think it was rushed. I think there was a lot of risk involved. I think COVID was real, yada, yada. But for something that had such a high, a low mortality rate to then take something that was so uncertain like just seemed like an unnecessary risk to me. And so I've felt this way the whole fucking time. And I always see on Twitter, you know, people tweeting and retweeting like, oh, you know, my my mom or my my spouse or whatever's had an adverse side, ref- side effect. And ever since then, you know, there's been multiple 20 something year old athletes that have died of heart attacks, like falling to their death on the field that they play, which isn't normal, by the way. Somehow that gets ignored. There's crazy increased amounts of, like, heart issues and other health issues after all this stuff. Whatever. Maybe it's propaganda. Maybe it's my algorithm for whatever, you know, I follow. But then, you, you know, you still see people, oh, my wife, my kid, my mom, my dad, my brother, my sister, myself has had an adverse side effect. And just the way that the internet's set up, I'm like, well, I don't know if that's even true. You know, that could be some fucking bot. That could be some, that could be someone lying, you know, trying to get clout and retweets and all that stuff. And so it really sucks, dude, that like, I know that shit's true now. 
Like, cause I, I'm one of them because yeah, I mean, it's not a hundred percent for sure, but the doctor of my dad said like, and the people that were with him and around him at his, at his work and, and all that stuff said, yeah, it like has really coincided after the third booster shot. And the doctor himself said, yeah, we've gotten on quite a few cases like this. And some people, it goes away. Some people, it doesn't. There hasn't been enough testing to really know what the right treatment for it is. So we can try some things. And so I say all that because it's like, damn, like, I hate to say I'm right in this situation. Because it fucking sucks, man. And I I wish I wasn't right. Because, I mean, it's different now. And so I'm, I know that there's been a lot of people that are unaffected by it, that it's worked well for them. There's been no side effects, no issues. That's great. I'm happy for you. I'm glad for you. But, um, it, it, Knowing that some of the judgment that I've gotten for my views and I don't, I personally don't judge anybody who did it. I've literally said before, like, I thought my dad should get it because he's older. He's at, you know, he's uh, out of shape. He's fat. And so like in terms of if COVID's going to kill someone, he was in that demographic. And so the risk of dying from COVID or then getting a side effect, adverse side effect, they're about the same. So maybe death is worse than dementia, but it also sucks to think like, well, maybe then still, if he would have got it, he would have been in the 92% that survived it, you know? And so I, I, I'm, I'll get off my high horse of this shit. Um, but it's like, I guess nobody who fucking listens to me and listens to this podcast is judging anybody for not getting the vaccine. At least, well, maybe, I don't know. Who knows? Um, but if you ever did, I hope you could reassess that because it doesn't seem that, oh, I know there are anti-vaxxers that judge people for getting it, but I think a majority of the people who are unvaccinated aren't looking at the others like they're bad people in the same way that the vaccinated tend to then look at the unvaccinated. So if you're in one of those categories and making judgments one way or the other, I just like ask that you don't. Mm, Yeah. I'm going to end it on a serious note. Just how it is. I got a couple other things, but it just wouldn't flow. So we'll save them for next week. A couple more finished things that doesn't really matter when I say them. So, uh, yeah. Thank you very much for listening tonight. You know, I think this one was a little bit different episode than normal. Maybe. I appreciate you. It's always good to hear from the random motherfuckers out there. Chuck, you bitch. You said I didn't mess, mess, mention you last time. I'm message. I'm. I can't even talk. I'm mentioning you now. Although I'm pretty sure I mentioned you last episode. You were just high on the couch and weren't listening. So yeah. All right. Appreciate you again. Until next time. Peace and much love. Holla. <laughs>